In this video, I am going to provide you with my interpretation of what consistently shaped treads and what the measurements of these will look like. This is actually an exception in a building code, uh, or I should say in the building code book, or one of the building code books. And, uh, and then, of course, it's actually a statement in one of the other ones. So let me start off with explaining what you cannot do with rectangular shaped treads. Now, this particular code um, said you're not allowed to do this with rectangular shaped treads. This is my interpretation of it, but uh, it said it was more for winders or a curved stairway is what I'm going to be guessing or make assuming on the curved. It did say for a winder stairway. So if you have a regular set of stairs with rectangular shaped treads, then you each one of these measurements, your riser height should be exactly the same. So we have 11 inch um, treads and, and we have seven inch risers, but all of the measurements should be exactly the same. And they shouldn't be different like this. So. If you have a step that's 11 and 3 eighths and one that is 10 and 5 eighths and then another one that is uh, 10, and 5, 10 and 5 sixteenths and 11 and 11 sixteenths, you, according to the building code, you are not allowed to have a variation of more than 3 eighths of an inch from the smallest measurement. And, and this building code was confusing a long time ago, but it looks like they changed it in the 2018 version and uh, someone who whoever did it did a good job on it so this is my interpretation of this building code using rectangular steps however this will not be the case for stairway or stair steps that are consistently shaped and what I have here and you've probably seen stairways like this before of course not like this exactly but it, you see them where they're coming, they're going up or they're coming down and the treads are, the steps are getting larger. And it's like, wait a minute, how can that work if we're supposed to measure off of the face of the riser at a perpendicular, um, with a perpendicular line? And um, I guess there's an exception or an allowance for it that as long as they are consistent, then you are allowed to do it. And what I went ahead and did here was built a set of stairs where we added two inches, six inches, eight inches, 12 inches, and then um, and then one foot eight. So basically I added two inches. I mean, I got started with a six inch, added two inches. Then I added four inches. Then I added eight inches. This would keep this all in a consistent shape. And all of these would be um, realistically in a consistent shape also. So if we come over here, we have one foot six. We had added two inches. Then we added four inches. And then we added eight inches. So this would be, in my opinion, a consistently shaped stairway. Now here's the key to all of this. And recently I was uh, been talking to a plumber about uh, a particular building code. And I don't think this guy um, grasped the idea that even though a building code says something, a building code book, it's still up to the interpretation of the building official in your area. If they interpret it differently, then you might not be able to build it or you might be able to build something else. So again, remember, this is just my interpretation. You would need to check with your local building department or building authorities for clarification and verification. Now let's take the same stairway and reverse it. I would be starting with the smaller um, step on top and working my way down to the larger steps. So six inches, eight inches, one foot, and one foot eight. Here's an example of a curved stairway with the consistently proportion or shaped treads. We simply subtracted one inch working our way up or subtracted one inch working our way down again, but these measurements are consistent. Same thing on the outside. And 
This is just another example, kind of throwing it out there. You can leave the inside measurement the same, but move the outside measurement. This would be consistent. And then here we changed the inside measurement and uh, kept the stairway consistent. So a consistently, um, I want to use the word proportional stair step, would need to gain in a ratio. Um, here we're adding one inch to the step. The ratio that you're going to use will need to be consistent. And I don't know if they were using the same 3 8 variation in the steps. But if I was you and you want my opinion, um, I would keep your stair steps exactly the same. Walking down stair steps like this, um, when you if you have like, if you have one at the bottom or two at the bottom, that might not be that big of a deal. Um, Safety-wise, it would be in my opinion. But if you have a, a set of stairs that um, you've got these things growing uh, maybe by three inches each step, these are not going to be easy stairs to walk up and down and could be confusing to some people. So I will leave it at that.